You're listening to View Source, a conversation around tech, web development, and WordPress with hosts Ruba Ahmed, that's me, and Brian Kortz. Hello, we are recording on a morning today. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing good. I can hear my children melting down in the background. It's nice, gloomy <laughs> clouds outside. It's a, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> It's a beautiful day. It's very beautiful here today, actually. But today we are going to take a little break from our React series and dive into another topic that I think is a big part of our lives every single day at work. Um, and to start that off, I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite PHP function? Oh, man, coming from like weeks of React and uh, blocks, I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, all right PHP, wake, wake back up, bring back the, the <laughs> PHP thing. I mean, I, I don't know if it's because it's the topic of our episode, but definitely the one that came to mind as the one I find myself typing the most is probably like, like var dump, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the one I can think of consistently as like, you help like you help me in a way that uh you know mm -hmm. a for loop doesn't like emotionally impact me you know what i mean that's true that's true i think that we'll get into this a little bit later but i have a little snippet that i've been using for like nearly a decade that is another version of var dump and the keyboard like snippet that i have it attached to is called dpd so in my head i don't even call it var dump i say let me dpd this and oh yeah uh, <laughs> yeah but, and then it will like do it for me <laughs> that's the um is it laravel that has the like dd like the die and dump function which yes. is like what i what i'll often do is in wordpress i'll do like a var dump and then i'll do a wp die right after it um and that's generally what i go and I'm sad to say, like, I don't have a snippet for it, but <laughs> I also have recently noticed that Copilot does it for me, like, very often when I'm, like, starting it. Better and it knows snippet. It's better because it knows what I, it always knows, like, what do you want to yeah. dump? And so it, that actually is, like, I'm like, ah, I don't need a snippet now, so. Yeah, no, totally. I agree. Um, well, you know, I, I would agree. I think Vardump and it's associated cousins are my favorite functions mm -hmm. for sure i use them way too much or no no i use yeah. them as much as i need and that is okay yeah don't and... bardump shame people there's there's no shame <laughs> in the bardump there really isn't um and sometimes i have multiple mul multiple of them like sitting on a page for a long time while i'm like figuring stuff out yeah. so i totally get that but that goes into you know this conversation really well because we are talking about how we debug, especially inside WordPress. But the concept of debugging is not special to WordPress. There are some things in WordPress that can help us, but first and foremost, how you debug is kind of a mindset. So walk me through, you know, a developer comes to you with a problem. How, what is the first thing that you start thinking of or how do you approach helping them debug? the problem that they've presented. Yeah, so I, I feel like I do this a lot, which is like, here's a problem. Can you tell me what's wrong and how to fix it? And yeah. inevitably, the first thing I do is like, I have to say like back up <laughs> 10 steps because I often don't know what project you're working on, what exactly. you're trying to accomplish, what you know the code looks like at this point, what phase in the project you are. So like, Usually the first step is to be like, what are you actually trying to accomplish? What is the like intended mm -hmm. result? And then what is yeah. the result you're getting? And then I need to see all the code, every part of yes. the code. I don't need to see the line of code or a chunk of code. I need like push that code to a branch and I need to see the code for myself because um, exactly. I need all of the context first and then I need to absorb it and like let it soak in. Yeah, I think one of the pitfalls that a lot of people fall into, and I've certainly been there myself, when you're deep in a project, you are trying to figure out this problem and you start zeroing in on just the area where you start to notice the problem. And so mm -hmm. you just get into the space where that's the only area you're focusing on. But, you know, I think you and I both know from experience, a lot of the times that's not where the problem happened. This is a side yeah. effect that's happening now. So when... 
a developer sends me a screenshot of like one tiny little bit of code. It's like, this is where the problem is happening. And I'm just like, that's not helpful. Because if this was the only area the problem was happening, you would have figured it out already. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I make the same mistake because you and I will send each other things too, where you just hit that yeah. mental block and you're just like, can you just look at this? Like, cause you want that fresh perspective on it, which yeah. you can always get by. Um, I think you had tweeted earlier about just like taking a nap <laughs> is a like yeah. taking a nap and giving it back to yourself is one way. But if we're sending stuff to each other, you do fall into that trap where you're like, Oh, this person's really smart. So I'll just send them like the line and they're going to know immediately. But it's like, no, everybody needs like the full context. The more information mm -hmm. you can provide, the more, clear you can be about what you're actually trying to do and what's not working uh yeah the better it's going to be for that person agreed exactly and i think even like just the way you said sometimes you and i do that to each other and it, it it's okay when we're working in the same code base so the other person is like fairly familiar with it but if you're not yeah. working in the same code base then it's even more important that one either you provide a far larger screenshot with far more context and more stuff that you write down for the person, or you provide the full code base so that the person can start playing with it. Or the, the very third option is, you know, you get up, get, get on a zoom, you live share, you screen share, and then you play with the code together where the person who you're trying to help is the one doing the actual work, but you're like telling them or working with them to yeah. figure out what to do. Right. I do that a lot, like constantly. <laughs> Yeah. One trick is like when you're going to make that screenshot and if you're on a Mac, you do like the command shift four, right? And you're like going to yeah. draw your little box. Like if you hit that space bar, it turns into yes. like, take a picture of my entire VS code window with my integrated terminal, but also maybe the files, which might give me a little clue or, you know, yes. all of it. I want to see all of it. Give me that full screenshot of the whole app, not just like the little, the little piece, you know? A hundred percent. I remember, I think this was just last week, someone actually gave me that full screenshot and the error was a tiny little bug that I could see in their integrated terminal. And I was like, uh, there's your bug. There's yeah. your bug right there, you know? Yeah. And you, they hadn't been looking at that. <laughs> you put NPM run tart or something, you know, dumb like that. Yeah. It's always. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the code, the source code did not get compiled correctly and therefore nothing was working. So on a similar, I've been having a similar thing where sometimes I'll hide my terminal and then I'll be working on something and it's not working and it's not working and it's not working and it's not working. And then I realize I open the terminal and it stopped compiling my code like 15 saves ago because of an error or it, yeah. I made a new file and it's not tracking that file. So it hasn't been compiling anything. So like yeah. that big picture view, you're like, oh yeah, that that often saves you. A hundred percent. And sometimes yeah, when that kind of thing happens to me, I feel really dumb, but it's also like just a reminder, it might be time to take a small break because you're too <laughs> close to it and you're not thinking straight, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So today I created a little bug for us to live debug. And okay. what I want to do is, so, okay, stepping back for one moment, I think that a lot of the times people don't understand or know what debugging looks like and I know I used to have imposter syndrome about how I used to debug and I think it would be really cool if we just debug in live like literally I have a bug I don't know what's going on and I'm coming to you for help and you and I are going to screen share and figure this out together because I think it's important to remember that no matter how much you know there's always more to know yeah now I'm a little nervous because I haven't I haven't actually <laughs> looked at the code so I well, that's good. It'll be like a proper real experience. All right. All right. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen and give you a little context for what's going on. Yeah. Tell me like what you're working on. Let me know like what you're trying to get done here, where things are going wrong. Um, I think for context, this is all going to be, we're, we're really focused on PHP, right? A little like PHP yeah. WordPress. So this is not I think we could do a whole separate episode about debugging when you're doing blocks or working in the block editor, but this is more mm -hmm. like classic PHP front end and WordPress stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen and in front of me, you can see a little blog post that I have running. It's called a little title. I wrote a little PHP inside a block theme. And what I am trying to achieve here is spit out a 
formatted custom date section below the title. And I want to be able to choose, like, if it was Monday, maybe choose show the date like this. Or maybe if it was Tuesday, show me something else instead. So in order to do that, the very first thing I did was I created some ECF options. And there's an options page called custom date. And here I have a repeater. And in each repeater, I have the field day. And there's Monday, Tuesday, you know, all the days of the week. And then I can choose a date output. That is the second field, which has the options of published date, modified date, or custom. And here, what I've set up is just three of these repeater rows, one for Monday. So on Monday, I wanted to show the published date. On Wednesday, I wanted to show custom, and it should say it's view source recording day. And then mm -hmm. Friday, I want to show the modified date. So this is what I've set up. But the problem I'm having is when I go to the post, it doesn't show up. Now, in order to do this, I added a filter to the content. That's okay. where I am sort of spitting out this logic. But even though I'm doing that, when I go to the front end, there's nothing there. Okay. Help, Help you. Okay. So the first thing I would say is, have you installed Query Monitor the WordPress plugin on your WordPress site? That's my first yes. question. Awesome. Yes. For context, Query Monitor is, is a plugin I always have on always all the time <clears throat> when I'm working on a WordPress site. Like it's mm -hmm. the first thing I install. Like it is, it is the first place to step. So on the top of the screen, you'll, when you have Query Monitor enabled, you'll see like in the admin bar, an area that says like, it has some like statistics on it, like how long the page loaded, like the total load size, um, stuff like that, how many queries are running. But if you yeah. hover over it, you can see basically like a list of all these different things you can dig into. You can see what are the database queries? What are, what templates are being pulled? What scripts are being mm -hmm. queued? What API calls are being run in the back end? Like what's the request? What, you know, what yeah. like is getting served over press? Like what conditionals are true and false? Like you can see everything. And so there you go. Like you've clicked it open and now on the front end and back in the WordPress, you can dig through all of these different sections and just, you're basically seeing like, what is WordPress thinking about literally everything in this moment right now? Mm -hmm. But it also shows you if you have PHP errors, which I can see yes. because it's bright red that you have one <laughs> PHP error. Okay. Yeah. So I've clicked it open to see what it's showing and it's showing me basically a table, but the main message it's saying is the for each argument must be of type array or object. Null was given. And then it's giving me the location of where I can find this bug. Yeah. And I actually, what I love is I hit that plus icon on the location and it gives you like that full kind of stack trace. So it's like, it's telling you that it's in your theme in your functions.php file on line 69. But it also tells yeah. you it's this function, the VS custom date info, and that function mm -hmm. is called because of the apply filters running on the content. So you've clearly this right. is a function you added as a filter on the content. And then you can see yeah. all the way down, um, the rest of it is all just like WordPress generating the content of this, uh, this page. Totally. Okay. So now that we've seen this error, what would you like me to do? Well, I guess we should open up your functions.php file. We should go to line 69. We should look at your function and see what did you put in this for each loop or this for loop that it's just so mad about. I mean, because so, it was a red file. It wasn't even like an orangey like warning. I mean, that was a red PHP notice. Yeah, it hated me. Um, my code hates me right now. Okay, so I have the code editor open and I've opened up the functions file and gone to the uh, VS custom date info function. And on line 69, I see that, uh, well, it says for each, and then there's a variable called custom date, and I want to use it as key to value, key value pair inside the for each. But mm -hmm. since it said null, I'm guessing that the custom date is like not actually what I think it needs to be. Okay. Okay. So I can yeah. actually see what's going on here. Do you want me to just, <laughs> I can just tell you, I can tell you right now. Oh, I know exactly what's going on here too. Well, yeah, it's your bug. But <laughs> it is so, my bug. Yeah, so like walk me through what you saw, okay. like how you're thinking yeah, yeah. about it, what's going on in your brain. Okay, so we know that the error is on line 69, right? So we know that for each yeah. 
custom date, it says it wants an array because you're looping through something or something iterable, mm-hmm. and it's not. It's it's getting a like a null value or a false or something like that. So right. at this point, I would probably go backwards and I would look at where does custom date come from? So right. line 65, we see that custom date. You're pulling in get field from ACF. Like get field is an ACF function that's basically a way to pull um, values of your custom field. And so yes. there's a few things that I would think about here. So first off, when you gave us the walkthrough of where your custom fields were defined, like these date labels, mm-hmm. um, that was an ACF options page. And yes. so when you use get field with an options page, you do have to pass it that second parameter that says options mm-hmm. rather than just like, cause like right now it's looking for this custom field on the actual post that it's rendering right now. But the field right. wasn't a post meta field. It was on the options page. So right. that's the first so I, thing I would do. Okay. So what I'm missing here is that we need to call this from the options page, right? Yeah. We need that second parameter that tells ACF. Um, this is an op- options field. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you do option I or do you do options? Which one do you like? I like option. You don't like that extra Why? S? Just No. Do you? Do you use options? I think, um, yeah, I think I do. Yeah. I, I think, think I, I think of it as this is a field, which is an option that I want. So that's yeah. why I always use option. <laughs> so for context, you can pass it either one and it'll work yeah. either way. But I think like, oh, this comes from my options. So I'll pass it <laughs> options and type that <laughs> extra fair. S every time. I don't know. That, it just looked <laughs> weird to me when I saw it there as option. But yeah, you can pass <laughs> either one. That's fine. Um, okay. Then what do I do? I've I, I've changed this. So, uh, two things. One is that I would also, if it were me, because I love conditionals, um, as you called out on yeah. me earlier this week, I really would wrap the for each in a conditional just to make sure. Like, okay. because what if it does return null? Like, what if you actually don't have anything set in that options field? It feels like it should be a conditional around it, right? I think in this case, I've made it, I am set up the options fields themselves so that they can never be empty. But yes, oh, you're right. Okay. If you don't have that set up in your, in your actual ECF options, then it would make sense to say, you know, yeah, that make sure that it's not empty. I'm just letting a co-pilot do the work for me <laughs> of telling me that, hey, if custom date is not empty, then only run this for each. But then that also means... No. Okay. The rest of my function is totally fine. Okay. Yeah. So should we go back to the front end and see like that, yeah. you know, now our, like, so now we found like, okay, it came from the wrong, it was pulling the wrong value. It was trying to pull it from the post. Like that's more of an ACF mm-hmm. error. Um, you just kind of forget to like pass it that second parameter sometimes. Um, yeah. And then your for each was trying to loop over a null value. So it was yelling at right. you. It's not, it's not going to break a site. It's not a fatal error, but you know, yeah. um, I don't it's not ever doing what like. I wanted to do. Yeah, I don't ever like to turn over a site with query monitor showing anything, anything, yeah, not even totally. a notice. I don't want anything in there. I want it clean. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen again. I'm going to refresh the page, and now I see a date, and can, it's telling. Go ahead. I was going to say, can we open query monitor just to make sure? I want to make sure we didn't add because sometimes you know there's stuff in there. All right, no errors. Okay, no errors. Yeah. Okay. There's no errors. Okay. We're all good. So that's good. But we're seeing the date, but this is the wrong date. This is not what I actually wanted to show because today is a Wednesday. And what mm. I had set up in my custom date was that on Wednesday, I wanted to sh- say it's view source recording day instead. So we don't have an error. Something is showing up, but it's the wrong stuff. Okay. Okay. So now, so now we have functional logic error this is going to be a lot harder this is going to (laughs) be this is really going to push me because uh it's pretty easy to see like a nice little php notice but this isn't something that query monitor particularly is going to help you with right yeah yeah this is something that you now had to go into and run with your favorite function okay so let's go through let's go through the logic a little bit because i yes there's a few ways you can go about this, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, you can var var dump basically everything sometimes and then just like look at it and kind of do that math or we can kind of go yeah. through it. 
Um, I yeah, think like the only step part... it through logically, right? Like what is actually happening in this function? Because we haven't actually looked at the whole thing yet. Yeah. So you're getting the date. You're So let's go through like starting at line 59, you're getting the post ID of the post we're looking yes. at. Mm -hmm. Line 61, you're getting the date. And line 63, yep. you're getting the modified date. Mm -hmm. That seems good. And line 65, you're getting the field options. And then on line yeah. 67, you're starting an empty string because, you know, the way the content works is you're just basically, you. it's a string and you can kind of add stuff to it. So we're going to make our own yeah. string to kind of combine, combine at all. the end. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Okay. So let's go into your for each. So we're going to, yes. you're looping through that custom date that we looked at before, which was like the an repeater. ACF repeater field and it had mm -hmm. like some options, right? So yeah, so it has day and you know date like the kind of output you want to do, and then there's a conditional output like field. So if you choose custom, you have another field where you can type in what that custom output you want it to be. And theoretically, that's what should come out today, right? Like we that's should be, right. we should be getting the custom field. Okay, Correct. so for each, we're looping through for each day. That's the value mm -hmm. of day. So that should, line 70, the day should say Wednesday because today. Yes. Like it's going to loop through, but we're looking for the instance where it's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then date output published equals, oh, those equal. How do you, how do you do those equal <laughs> signs like that? Come on. Doesn't that, doesn't that <laughs> hurt your face to look at that? I love it. I like having it all connected. <laughs> how many equal signs is that? It's three equal signs. Like seven equal signs combined into one. What? Two would look like that with only two lines. And what? three will have three lines. Yeah, this is like coding. Coding fonts have this as a, like a ligature that you can use. Who does this? And the number themselves? of lines. Everyone, everyone. Okay. I enjoy it. But so this is a ternary. And that's mm -hmm. kind of an annoying thing sometimes, especially when you are debugging. Sometimes that can make it harder to debug, which is why they're not super encouraged in WordPress standards, right? Not super encouraged. I mean, do you have your coding standards turned on? Because this would be all red squiggly lines if I pulled this up in my code editor. I do have my coding standards turned on. Okay. It's not yelling <laughs> at you for this one? No, it's not yelling. Okay. So walk me through, what is what is date output? that you're You're deciding this variable equals date output equals... So explain to me yeah, what, so, um, what do you think? So I have this field called date output, and that can be either set to published or modified or custom. So here what I was doing was saying, hey, if the, uh, the field itself is set to published, then this date output here should be set to the current post date because it's just the published post date. Otherwise, give it the modified date. Because what I decided to do instead was have a custom variable underneath and say, hey, if the date output set in the repeater was custom, then, you know, you have a custom value and you can set that in custom. And then I can check that later. And instead of like checking what the date output was, was and then doing it separately, like I'm just doing it together in, without like having to do a bunch of if conditionals. Okay. I guess in my mind, what I would think is, the first thing I'd want to know is if I'm even on the right day. You know what I mean? Right. Like, okay. before I did any logic, I would want to know, mm -hmm. like, is the day of the post the actual day that I'm looking at? Does that make sense? Okay. So when you're, when you're doing your, your filter and you're saying, on, you're saying if the published date of the post is, is a Wednesday, not if, like, today, mm -hmm. right now, the yeah. current date I'm looking at is Wednesday. Yeah, if the we're we're checking the published date of the post and we're saying, hey, okay. if if that matches, you know, and we have a setting for it in the repeater, then uh, do the output that we've set for that date. So, like, if today, if this published date is Wednesday, show me its view source recording day. Okay, okay. So then I'm probably correct that like lines seventy one to seventy two, like we don't need to get to just yet, right? Because we like we're doing extra logic that might not even matter because we only want to like deal with this if this if this is later okay so i think we should just start variable dumping some things because i think like that's okay. going to make me super happy okay all right okay what do you want a variable Let's, dump okay i want a variable dump day 
mm-hmm. which is the value of the day. Yep. So on line 70, or yeah, that's fine. Do, no, you can do it right there. Okay. I want to okay. know what day. Yeah. Do you want me to do them and separately? Then, do you want them like in each line? Yeah, I do them on a separate line because it'll tell us what line when you variable dump it tells you like what line you dumped it on. Mm-hmm. And then I want to know what day the post was, right? So what I want okay. is that's where you're using get the date with the uh, yeah. uppercase N, right? Yeah. I yeah. want that so one too. So we can do that. Okay. Let's do that too. All right. Those are the two you want right now? Should I get anything else while we're here? Mm, you tell me. You're the, mm. you're the one helping me debug right now. Okay. Then I think the next one I would want, since we're here, I also want to know what that yeah. date output is. Date output? Okay. Yeah. So this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to loop through, and we're going to get a few different values because custom date, we're going to loop through. We're going to see this three times. And what yes. I think I'm going to see, this is what I think is going to happen, is I'm going to mm-hmm. see the day. So I'm going to see like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because you had done Monday, Wednesday, Friday in your repeater field. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to see the day of the actual post that we're looking at, which should stay the same yeah. for all three instances, right? Mm-hmm. And That's one right. of those instances should match because it should say Wednesday. So it should be like Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Friday, then it should say Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. And then I think for that date output, I should see the values for that. Yeah. I think so one thing I'm going to say is that we're not going to see the words. We're going to see the number for each of day of the week. That's what N does. So it's like Monday is one, Tuesday is two, et cetera. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. We'll go to the front end again. Okay. So I'm going to hit refresh. And now at the very, very top of my screen, we're seeing a bunch of really nice VAR dumps. (laughs) Yeah. And I would say there's a few things to think about. One is that um, essentially when you're running a filter on the content, like that's yeah. happening way before like the actual content is being rendered. It's like happening way like while WordPress is still thinking before it's yeah. rendering. And so mm-hmm. um, sometimes when you do like a variable dump, you might not see it right away because it might be somewhere in your hidden header or you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's yeah. somewhere where it doesn't that show up on your page. Lot. Yeah. So yeah. always like scroll up or even check your source code and like look for it yeah. because sometimes you you just don't, you don't find it. Yeah, I do this a lot. And so here, I'm actually going to show open up the inspector tools and make that a little bit bigger. Um, because I'm using local, I turned on the xdebug option in there. And what that does is regular var dump actually sometimes puts it in like a weird table sometimes or does other things. Yeah. But if you have xdebug turned on for local, it'll for it'll put it inside this class called xdebug var dump. So if you just want, you can like search for that with like command f or something if you can't find it and it'll show you where it is so that's something that's really handy okay so yeah so i am correct that the line 73 we have 135 that's monday wednesday friday right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and line 74 right. we have 333 wednesday 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 and yep. my line 75 the custom date is april 12th april 12th april 12th Yes. And that to me doesn't seem, that to me tells me that all the date stuff is working out pretty well. That stuff mm-hmm. is good. There was something about your conditional that I would want to return to when we get to it. But mm-hmm. so far, that's all pretty good. But I'm kind of curious why line 75 is the same for all three because it's supposed to be returning different values. So what that means is either it's wrong or I didn't understand what that line was supposed to do. Let's be honest, mm-hmm. it could be either one of those two things. So let's go back into the code and let's do some more variable dumping. Okay. Because I think we can agree that the matching of the post date and the date in the loop works pretty well. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so the, the thing that we're seeing that is always the same is the, the date output um, here. So that's always April 12th. Um, which would make sense because I published it and I modified it today. Okay. Okay. Right. So. Yeah, because that's pulling from the actual post. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. This shouldn't yeah. change. There's no that's, change in that value. That's right. Yeah. So. Okay. Then what am I missing? 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is let's keep 73 and 74 because I do want to know when, like I want to know okay. which iteration of the loop I'm in, you know? I want to know that mm -hmm. I'm in that like Wednesday loop. All right, but now on line yeah. 75, let's do this. First, let's variable dump custom. Okay. And to be clear, I'm not going into your if statement yet because I feel pretty confident that it's not path like your I feel like your conditional on line 76 is not hitting true at all. Like so I don't want to mm -hmm. do anything in there because I feel like nothing will come out. I mean that I could do. I could put a little like a ver dump inside there. But we are like, seeing an output. So it is getting into the if conditional. Oh yeah, that's true because you're not changing the date. You're actually just adding it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I take it back. <laughs> okay. So let's see what the let's see what custom comes up with. Okay. Okay. So custom is coming up as false every single time. Okay. That's not good cuz we wanted a custom date. We wanted it to say it's view source recording time, right? Did I get the right? That's right. Yeah. I um, almost I was going to do it like in the Saturday night live voice, you know, like the old guy does <laughs> like his the, the intro voice. <laughs> Okay. That's how I think about it when I was writing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. then let's go back. So it should definitely not be false every time. It should be true in that third statement. Yes, exactly. So custom right now is saying, hey, if date output is custom, then grab the custom value. Otherwise, it's false. Yeah, but it shouldn't be date output because you right. set yeah. date output on line 71. So like, yes, like you overrode, I don't want date output, your variable. I want date output from your repeater field. I want like value yeah. date output. I want this the date one. output that was coming out of there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this is what happens when you have not good variable names. You confuse yourself. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's worse, your variable names or your equal sign, <laughs> like voodoo magic. Both of those... <laughs> tricked me out <laughs> all right save this run this again yeah. because i think what's happening is like we wanted to know if the value was going to be custom or not yes yeah. yes all right exactly okay so now in one of the iterations for wednesday it is showing me it's view source recording day and if i go down into the actual post i can see that it's showing me the actual custom value now so you solved it <laughs> that was pretty good i got a little I, like halfway through, I thought, man, I don't know if I'm going to solve this. Sometimes you're <laughs> looking at a bug and you're just like, I didn't eat enough breakfast for this. I think, I think you, I think if I were giving feedback, I yeah. would say a few things. I would say yes. the first thing I would do is on each of those lines, I would add a comment above it explaining what you think yeah. it needs to do. And it's mm -hmm. more for yourself than for anything. Like it's more just like think through what you're doing. Um, yeah. think through all the steps. And then I would think also about what basically what you want, what you want these variables to, to exist, because I did feel like it seemed a little. Like there's a lot of work happening before it needs to happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, in a lot of situations, I would say even like the dates that I'm grabbing, like I don't need to grab these dates this early on. You know, I could just grab them when I need to grab them. Um, yeah. And I would say WordPress has gotten pretty good at like caching a lot of that stuff. So it's not like you're like hitting yeah. the database for it. You know, you're just pulling it out of the like cache. But like, again, yeah. Yeah. I would, I'd be like, I think you could rewrite this to be a lot more performant. And I also think mm -hmm. this is where I fall on the side of really liking that WordPress makes you be more verbose and not use so many like inline conditionals like that. Because I do right. think it takes the amount of time you saved typing, you wasted in my my low amount of brain cells having to process what was <laughs> happening in those. So I, I'm a fan of like being a little bit more descriptive with what you're doing to save time in the long yeah. run. Yeah. I mean, I think that I do enjoy ternaries, uh, you know, doing sort of evaluating things in the actual setting or declaring of a variable. But I think that there's a lot of situations where that does make it more complicated and it's not suited for every situation. So in this particular case, I think the biggest problem that I see when I look at this code is that the variable names 
for day date output, they're just a little bit confusing and they're not quite as accurate as they should be. Like a lot of the times when you're looking at your code, if you haven't named your variables correctly, one, you definitely then need a lot more in, in inline documentation because your code is not self-explanatory. And two, you if, you if you're not clear, then it's harder to read it yourself and find the problem, which is what happened here because I have this date output, but it probably shouldn't have been called date output. Or maybe the original repeater field should not have been called date output. Like this is, this is fairly confusing to look at that I have a variable called date output, but then I also have a repeater field that does something different that has date output. I mean, that's, that's not helpful, especially if you come back to it, you know? So that. I agree with like what you're seeing. Plus, I just think that it's important to be a little bit more intentional with how you name things. <laughs> yeah, the other piece I think too is like there was three different types of date outputs, right? You could have the published date, the modified date, and the custom date. But by using yeah. two separate conditionals, like a conditional or a ternary is like this or that, but it's really not great yeah. when there's three use cases. So like now exactly. that I've looked at it, I'm like, I understand the logic of what you're doing, but like I would have probably used like a switch case kind of a thing because there's three 100%. different options. And then I could yes. very easily see because like if it's custom, then you don't actually need line 71 at all. But like, yeah, you're doing the logic ahead of time. Yeah, there. I think. Yeah, exactly. And I think that this is something that I see all the time. Switch switch case is so good but so few people use it and this is mm -hmm. the perfect scenario for using switch case in, instead of for each where and it's a little bit more performant too whenever you have like those different options because it's just like switching and quickly evaluating before running to, through the whole thing which is really really nice yeah and but putting all of that in the successful. conditional yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty successful debugging session though i think <laughs> yeah that's i mean i I'll, I'm going to check my Apple watch for what my heart rate went up to in the middle. Cause there was like a moment where I was like, cause I think the hardest part of helping another person is, is getting that. Like we talked about at the beginning, it's like getting the full context, getting the information. It's like, it's not always finding the bug. It's finding like, what am I, you know, understanding the code and like understanding yeah. the code, knowing the whole picture. That's, way more important than like the tools of debugging. I think you and I could probably talk about this a lot more and there's more to cover with debugging. So we might do another episode on another <laughs> angle of debugging <laughs> as it goes with everything we talk about. But I think that was a that was pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the barrage of tweets about why we didn't use X debug for this uh, case, <laughs> yeah. um, which we could do, which is a different a different mindset and a different approach. And I think we could maybe do a, a similar version with, with that approach, but, um, mm -hmm. but I, I, you know, nothing wrong with a little variable dump when you're just trying to, just trying to get through some solve code. a little problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your help on my imaginary, uh, bug there on our mm -hmm. little theme and I'll see you in the next episode. All right. See you then. Visit viewsource.fm for the latest updates and links to the show notes. Review and subscribe to ViewSource in iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts.